chips and I almost got into a fist fight. So yeah, yeah I don't know, hazing, you could call it hazing. Welcome to Charleston. It has some of my favorite things in a city. Great architecture, a ton of history, and Southern hospitality. Yeah, she lost me at history. <laughs> All right, I'm already intrigued. Across the bay there is an aircraft carrier. I think we'll make our way over there. Oldest public building in the state of South Carolina, built in 1713 to house black powder. We were a proprietorship, not a colony, so we had to protect ourselves. Walled ourselves in, bastions with cannons, this is where the black powder was stored. Side walls, three foot thick. Above your head, only two bricks. The idea is there was an explosion in here, we go up instead of out. The hole upstairs is all filled with sand. Did they think that might smother the flames? We don't know, it's still all up there. <laughs> we wanted to stay that way. So after some delicious South Carolina barbecue, we figured it was only fair to hit up the bakery right down the street. Two of my favorite things, barbecue and bakery. All right guys, we interrupt this video to bring you a quick announcement. And that announcement is <laughs> Boondockers welcome. If you're not using them, why not? Actually, what we <laughs> meant to say was Boondockers welcome are increasing their prices on May 1st. So if you have been thinking about joining Boondockers Welcome, now is the time. You can lock in the rate of $50 a year as opposed to 70 bucks a year, which is what they're going up to. If you join at 50 bucks a year, you will lock in that rate for the lifetime of your membership. As long lifetime. As, it, as long as it doesn't end or lapse, you are locked in for that price. And if you use our code, which I will put down in the description, you can also save an extra 15%. That's right. In case you don't know, Boondockers Welcome is a membership that allows you to stay overnight at on private property. You can stay up to five nights. Now, technically, it's supposed to be boondocking, meaning you're unplugged, there's no utilities, but almost all of the boondocker hosts now have some sort of utility where it's electric, water, both, and some even have sewer. That's right. I mean, you could stay in their front yard, their backyard, their driveway, their neighbor's driveway if they're not home, <laughs> but it's personal property, personal land that you can stay on. Phenomenal. Welcome to Chalmers Street. People think the street was paved with cobblestones, where they're not actually cobblestones, they're ballast stones. So these stones came over to the U.S. from England in the hull of ships to keep the ships from basically flipping over out to sea. The ships came over empty because they would come here loaded up with goods to take back to the king. Now when the ships got to the colonies, they needed to unload these stones somewhere, and instead of dropping them down into the bay, they used it to pave the streets. 235 men, women, and children, the oldest being almost over 100, and the youngest being an infant, so womb wet, they weren't even named or had an age. In the bottom would have been the offices. The next three floors would have been holding pens until the individuals could have been auctioned. The other building that was on the property was a combination of a kitchen and something that we call a death house. If you were elderly, infirm, or otherwise unable to be sold, you would have been placed there and just expected to die. All of the older bricks would have been handmade by local plantation workers, uh, most likely a small children or a woman, because it was considered less arduous mm -hmm. of a task. We have a old diagram that told ship captains how to pack the cargo in, and you can see there's no breathing room. It was just stacked and stacked and stacked. 
on Chalmers Street, you'll also find one of the oldest dwellings here in Charleston, and that's the Pink House. And if you ask anybody about the Pink House, they'll direct you right here. This building actually started off as a bar. It was built by a pirate, and today it's someone's house. The top floor, it's only about five and a half feet high. So if you're tall and you're living in that house, you're gonna be doing a lot of ducking. What a perfect, what a perfect way to spend the day. Just dreaming Way to spend the day Just honey do baby boo Sugar be love me Way to spend the day Just hope you feel the same I'm falling away over the moon Like spring in full bloom But um but um while you're here in Charleston, there are some small museums I recommend everyone go through. The first up is here is the Slave Mart. Now this was actually an indoor market where they sold slaves. And let me tell you, when you walk in, it, it's going to have a real profound effect on you. The yeah. other two is the Magazine and... The Provost and Exchange Building. So they're small museums that were really hit hard by COVID. So make sure you pop in, give them some love, share them on your social media, and you really, I think you'll enjoy all three of the buildings. So it's been so good since we've been in Charleston. <laughs> I'm always to, good. Going to all my historic places. So today is his reward. Yep, we're gonna do what I love to do best. Go tour a ship, a US Navy ship. Yeah, you'd think he'd be over it by now. I mean, he was on, he does have what? 13 years of sea duty, 12 years? 12 years of sea time, but who's counting? Yeah, so you'd think he'd be over it, but nope. Let's go check out the Yorktown. That's right, we're gonna go aboard the USS Yorktown today and uh, compare how good a living I had on the USS Midway, my first carrier. <laughs> Well, that brought back some memories. <laughs> that it did, especially <laughs> the picture of the shillelaghs. Yeah, so the Pollywogs actually are sailors who have never been across the equator. And That's then right. once you go across the equator, you're considered a shellback. That After is. you go through the yes. ceremony. Now, I am a shellback. Phil is a shellback. Yep. And we usually joke with our son-in-law because he is a Pollywog. He's a... Um, He's a builder, so a CB. He's a CB. So he'll probably never go to sea. So we always joke that I have way more sea time than him, <laughs> even though he's been in the Navy longer than I was. That's right. And and just seeing those pictures and the Pollywog flag brought back all those memories. Oh, my gosh. Um, going through the garbage chute. The shillelagh. Uh, now, let me tell you what a shillelagh is. That's <laughs> actually an old fire hose that they, what do, I don't know how they make it hard. I don't know how. No, they just cut off a three-foot section of it, and they, they kind of wind wound the end up with some line to make it make a handle out of it. And then they hose you down so you're wet, and then you come through this line, a gauntlet, and they schwack you on the backside with oh, yeah. the shillelagh. I got my butt beat that yeah. day. It was crazy. And then you saw the picture with the... Um, the, the, the royal baby, baby. <laughs> yeah, the peanut butter on his belly. Now, all they did with that was they got the biggest belly. So usually a chief, I'm going to say that because it's true, <laughs> usually a chief with a big old belly, and they put something in his belly button like ours was lard. Ours was peanut butter and lard. No, ours yeah. was lard, and then they shoved your face into it. Yeah, you had to get, the, so you had to get the cherry. They put a cherry in the royal baby's belly button. No, so, we didn't do that. So the royal baby sat on the King Neptune Rex's um, <laughs> court, if you will, or thrown with him. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. It's been so long, but it was a ton of fun um, looking back on it 30 years. <laughs> it wasn't fun was when we went fun. through it. No. It was so disgusting. We had to put our clothes on inside and out. So my, I mean, it was, it was so bad at the end. We had to take off all our clothes and we had to throw it overboard because That's what we did. your clothes are trash. You're never yeah. getting them clean. Yeah, it was it, so bad. Yeah, it was really bad. And we, the garbage chute, 
um, alone, the smell oh, and the stench so of the old food. People were growing up in there. Yeah. It was so bad. Oh, my uh, gosh. And you might think, oh, that's that's kind of hazing, isn't it? Well, it was well. it was a rite of passage back then. And, and, it uh, was hazing. It, it was, but in a fun way. I mean, I I remember it fondly. <laughs> but we had two broken arms on our ship. I was on the Acadia, <laughs> oh, and gravy. we ended up, two people ended up with broken arms. And I almost got into a fist fight, so, yeah, I don't know. Hazing, you could call it hazing. Sensitive ones over here. Oh, no. Fist fight. Oh, it no. was fun. Well, and they were off limits. So when you go to the bathroom, if somebody gangs on you in there as you're coming out of the toilet, some places are just <laughs> off limits. Obviously, me and that chick didn't get along. <laughs> we, we didn't have any of that on our ship. I was on Midway when I went through. And uh, I've also been on the other end where I got to help initiate yeah, those polywogs into shellbacks. And it was just as fun on that end, too. So, Andrew, like I said, is a shellback, but he went through the kindler, gentler Navy, so yeah. he didn't even know what a shillelagh was. So, I don't know. I think we should yeah. take a shellback card away. His shellback has an asterisk by it, that's for sure. <laughs> this is the Knot Challenge Board. Let's see if Phil can remember some of the knots he used to tie as a boatswain's mate all the time. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do the bowling, and how I remembered it is the, the rabbit comes out of the hole, goes around the tree, Around the tree. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let's back it up. <laughs> the line got caught here. All right. So, start over. Here we go. The rabbit comes out of the hole. Around the tree. Back in through the hole. Boom. You're bowling. All right, so we'll give him that one, even though he had to do it in two attempts, I not the first attempt. He yeah, got you got caught. Uh huh. He got tangled he got up. Tangled. Like we was standing right next to the number three wire, so when an aircraft's coming in, you'll see the tail hook down behind me. The goal is to grab the number four wire, or the first wire aft, catch it and come in at full power. And as soon as they hook, somebody lets them know that they've hooked it, and then they power down. But in theory, they want to grab the first one, and the other ones are there just in case they miss that one. They have this one would have had, it looks like four, so they would have had three others to try to grab before they had to take back off again. We have really enjoyed our time here in Charleston. It has been a lot of fun, and the campground here is pretty sweet. It is. It's uh, it's a, a little small um, compared to some of the fam camps we stayed in, but it's well maintained. There's, there, it's in close proximity to everything. This was a really nice day. 
And the cool thing is we are actually, the row we're in is first come first serve or overflow, whatever you want to call it. So they do hold some of those and in the back is where the reservations are. And you're right beside all the MWR activities. There's a tennis court, playground, there's a trail that you can walk or bike. So it's just really centrally located. Yeah, and you're a mile to the backside gate, I guess, of the base to yeah. take you out into North Charleston. Really, really nice spot to uh, hang out in. So if you're military or if you have access to the MWR, this is a great stop along the way. Yeah, it's a nice little hidden gem. Hidden